Nearpod started as just an app. When it opened up to be web-based and anyone could access the lessons via Nearpod.com, it made it more accessible for students and teachers alike, any device. Um, it's very similar to Pear Deck in that there's a good portion of the content that's free, but then you can upgrade for more paid features. However, I personally feel that there are more free features on Nearpod than Pear Deck. Another key difference is that students do not have to sign in with a Google account in order to access the Nearpod um, content. So teachers would sign in at Nearpod.com um, with I'm signed in right now to my free account. I'll go to my library. In here are all of my lessons that I've either created or saved to my library from somewhere else. For each lesson, I can start a live session. I can assign for homework so that students can complete the activity anytime, anywhere. Um, and I can edit each lesson and add additional questions or slides of information. So any of these are ready to go. I'm gonna go back to the main screen so you can see the other options. One of the most exciting features about Nearpod, in my opinion, is the content library that's available. Now again, not all of them are free, so that I encourage you, if you're searching here, to uh, search the filter and right away put on the free filter. Unless you're willing to pay for content, you just pay for it on the teacher end and then um, give it to students uh, as many as you want to use it with. Um, in the subject area and grades, those offer additional feature filters. Then you can search for specific topics and find really good starter lessons that are either made by publishers or content providers, or um, maybe just give you an idea of, of a lesson that you can model your own after. Let's go ahead and check out one of the top free lessons that are here. Let's try out this money Nearpod lesson for grades one and two. And when I click on it, I can preview the slides and see if it matches my objectives for teaching. I'm going to go ahead and add it to my library now. And now it shows up back in the My Library. So along with the other lessons, I now have the money lesson. I'm going to start this as a live session so we can see how it looks on the student end. And it gives me a pin, which my students then enter into the Nearpod.com website. And they do not do not have to sign in if they just click Join Lesson or Enter Pin to Join Lesson. They can bypass that need to create an account, which is nice. Here's my code, and I'll go ahead and enter into this show. Um, I do have to enter in my name and, and, and now I control it by the teacher uh, device. So when I advance the slide it also advances it on the student side. So it lets us know here that there's going to be a slideshow of information to teach with to begin. You can see how it changes and I can be instructing students about the different coins and their values and students can actually navigate that slideshow independently of the teacher. Next up is a quiz. Here's a multiple choice example. So the student gets to hit go, decide which coin this is, and the teacher device will then see what they answered. Um, I can do several things here. I can um, navigate to additional slides with the bottom menu. I can um, definitely see all the students and what they answered. I can also share the results. If it would be a poll that I would want the students to see the results, I can push it back to their devices. When I, nav when I advance to the next slide, it lets me know what's coming up and it changes it on the student device. In this case, it's a video that they would watch independently with their headphones on. There's a bit of information. And now a different type of question type. This is a draw it question type. And so the students have the ability to actually use the drawing tools on their device and count up or add together how much the money is. And then hit send to send it to their teacher. And you can see that the student drawings in pretty close to real time are displayed. Any student that would be in the lesson right now would have um, a small um, screen showing the teacher what their response was. And you can see it populating here. And there's my 26 cents. Okay, and I would advance to the next slide and it therefore advances for the students too. All right, so we will end this lesson and remove the students from the presentation. You can see that that happens over there. 
And just one final reminder that if you're on your Nearpod home dashboard, it's very easy to create. You just get these slides, these blank slides, and on each slide you can add content, you can add a web link, URL information, and you can add an activity. And the question types are an open-ended question, a poll, a quiz, a draw it, fill in the blanks, and a memory test. For the draw it question, you can add an image in the background, give instructions if you want, or just use a blank file and um, a blank whiteboard page for the students to work out a math problem on or draw their response to your prompt. So that's this first slide, then I would add another slide, and it's very easy to create Nearpod lessons.